thank you, Bano. Um, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Research, Innovation, and Digital Policy, dear friends, lots of uh, friendly faces here, uh, and members of the entrepreneurial community. Uh, on behalf of the University of Cyprus, I would like to welcome you to today's event for the presentation of uh, the results of the research project mapping the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Cyprus. Um, uh, actually, the rector was uh, planning to be here to, uh, to welcome you. I hope you're not too, too disappointed that he, um, he had a pressing obligation, he couldn't make it. Um, I, on the other hand, I'm very happy that, I feel very fortunate that the rector couldn't come because I, I have the opportunity to, um, to address you and um, um, see, see this uh, interesting and important gathering. Um, you know, we are here at the University of Cyprus, um, and uh, we're here to talk about the entrepreneurial e ecosystem. And you know, this is very appropriate, I think. Um, universities are the bedrock of such systems everywhere. Um, universities is where new knowledge is created and disseminated. Um, it's the primary objective of every research university, and uh, this is something I think we do very well at the University of Cyprus. Uh, it's important to remember that you know the production of knowledge is uh, the basic ingredient, I, be, I believe, in a well-functioning system of innovation and entrepreneurship. Without this, the whole edifice is on shaky foundations. Um, so it's important to invest in the production of knowledge, in basic research, even when we cannot use, see uh, the tangible benefits. They will come uh, with further work. Of course, the production of knowledge is only the first step. Uh, it's a long way to go from, from that to the um, uh, creation of uh, innovative new products and services that uh, address the needs of society. And this is the part that we are maybe not as good at yet, but working on it. I think both we at the university here uh, and also in, in Cyprus, generally, this is uh, something that's uh, relatively new, but I think we're, we're getting better. Um, I think in the last few years we see uh, a culture of uh, entrepreneurship being, uh, uh, being created, and this is very encouraging and it's very exciting, I think. Um, here at the university, we want to be a part of this, uh, not just for the, uh, the production of knowledge, but also the, um, the further steps for the development of uh, products and services and uh, nurturing entrepreneurship. We have done quite a few things. We have founded this center, which is hosting this event, the Center for Entrepreneurships. We hold st startup competitions on an annual basis. We offer entrepreneurship courses. We hold um, dozens of business lectures every year. We run surveys and compile reports for the, like for example, for the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. We sent three students to international events and competition just in 2022. Um, we were, um, we kind of sowed the seeds for site to seeds and we are very happy to see it uh, flourishing. And we also uh, work very hard along with uh, other uh, partners like Ministry to, to improve the legal framework um, that will allow the commercialization of ideas coming from universities. In, in my school, my, the Faculty of Economics and Management, um, we, have, we further support entrepreneurship through curriculum design. In our MBA program, entrepreneurship is an intended learning outcome for the whole program, and it's uh, supposed to be um, an outcome in every course. Every course has to have an element of entrepreneurship in it. In the last uh, Five years alone, we have three new master programs. Um, one in uh, um, business economics with an emphasis on entrepreneurship. That's, been run, that's an inter-university program that has been running for five years, I think. More recently, we have the, the master program in data science, which just finished its first year, I believe, uh, which is a collaboration with uh, an interdepartmental program in collaboration with the departments of mathematics and statistics and computer science. And this September, we're starting a new program in behavioral economics, which is a collaboration between the Department of Economics and the Department of Psychology. Okay. So all these programs, all these interdisciplinary um, um, efforts are basically trying to provide our students and uh, uh, the skills that we believe that uh, uh, companies need. 
Um, so this is just a few things. We will continue to work and we will promise to do more um, to, to help these efforts. And um, I think I'm supposed now to introduce, uh, well, actually I'm very happy to introduce uh, uh, our next uh, um, speaker who is, uh, I know from a few years ago, Dr. Ioanna Sato Bebelasi, who is a professor emerita at the Athens University of Economics and Business. And she's going to tell us about her experience in mapping the Greek entrepreneurial ecosystem. Dr. Bebelasi. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very emotional today because this is a great moment. I've come to Cyprus, to Lefkosia, many times in the past. Well, I consider them many and I hope them, uh, they become more in the future. And it was in two 2014 that we started mapping the startup ecosystem in uh, Greece. And it was um, a, a two people show at the moment, at the time. It was very difficult because uh, uh, people were not aware that there was a startup ecosystem that was growing in our country. So the mapping started at the Athens University of Economics and Business at the Department of Economics. And now it is continuing in various guises. Uh, the Aneosis, which is the biggest uh, private think tank is in Greece, just put out a study on the startup ecosystem where it is uh, uh, updated because originally we looked at the period of the crisis, 2010 to 2016, and now at Alia Map we are extending the horizons of the study to include also the role of the diaspora, the Greek diaspora in the startup ecosystem. So uh, what have we learned from all this process? First of all, let me say that it is very difficult to chart, to map the startup ecosystem because because information is hard to come upon. Uh, we drew our information from uh, incubators in the first stage, in the second stage from uh, uh, other stakeholders, uh, consultants, and uh, other agencies. Now, uh, what we see is the startup ecosystem has matured. When it started, it was basically just incubators, starting from grassroots need to stay in Greece. It's a complicated story why the startup ecosystem was born in 2010 and not earlier. We are a bit earlier than you. Uh, as you say, I think four or five years uh, earlier than the uh, startup ecosystem in Greece. And uh, we were able through the mapping to be able to understand the strong and weak points of the ecosystem and also to provide a basis for uh, investors to know where they're coming to when they come to Greece to invest in the startup ecosystem and also to provide information which is useful for the government, especially the study done by the analysis is oriented towards that direction. Now what we have learned is that uh, Greece is an important hub. It has the, the uh, possibility of becoming an important hub in terms of knowledge intensive startups. And uh, what, what is very interesting is that the, all the startups in our ecosystem are basically high tech, if not in product or service, in uh, process. And this is important. And they are very different. They are, they are startups are team based and basically they have a vision of internationalization. In the original um, um, study at uh, AWEB, we separated our database of 300 startups into uh, the following two subcategories. Those that succeeded to survive by 2020 and those that failed and then we did another differentiation, another subgroup uh, consisting of those firms that were internationalized, I had customers abroad and those that did not. And we saw which features uh, led to success, uh, to survival. We measure, measured survival by success, uh, success by survival, and which were more internationalized. To make a, a long story short, um, internationalization is a road towards survival, and this is something very important. And also, we found that the startups that were more internationalized uh, had uh, startups who had experience abroad. They were more open-minded than the average startup. Um, I, can I send you at the center 
Professor Markopoulos the uh, links to these studies, so whoever wishes can look at them. What is useful for uh, Cyprus? What have we learned? Uh, what we observed, especially in the second study, the one by the analysis, is that there is large uh, these, uh, there's large segmentation within the startup ecosystem today. Uh, the various stakeholders do not communicate well with one another, not because they don't want to, it just happens so. So what we need is to increase the, the, the channels of communication. Also, uh, we have learned that it is important to engage foreign investors, but uh, this is something I believe very strongly in and I want to underline, also members of the Greek diaspora. And fortunately, the networks working with uh, the diaspora are increasing very much. I don't want to go into the details of the study. I would like to look forward. And um, uh, what, what, what would I, what is my dream looking forward for Greece? My dream for Greece is for us to collaborate, for Cyprus and Greece. Uh, perhaps Cyprus can take the lead because I must confess you are more open-minded, you are more internationalized than what uh, mainland Greece is. So to, for us to create a network where information will be exchanged among startup ecosystems. And I w uh, I've been thinking, and uh, I would like to propose that this starts with Cyprus, uh, Athens, Salonika, and Torino, because Italy also has a latecomer and smaller startup ecosystem. What these three countries have in common is that we have a tradition of small, medium enterprises, and why not uh, go for a venue where the startup ecosystem with its uh, it progressive, high-tech, digitalization, et cetera, et cetera, will push along the SME sector in these three countries. So what I think that you are doing here is very important. I'm looking at the map at the end of the uh, this uh, beautiful hall here. And there are incubators, there are lots of stakeholders. But what is unique to the University of Cyprus is your research. And I want to congratulate Anna and uh, Professor Markopoulos for this initiative and everyone who was involved because uh, I looked at the study and it's, 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 it's very good, it's very high quality. So looking forward, why not uh, co uh, create venues of collaboration and incite more Greco uh, uh, Cypriot uh, startups such as Paul Fish, which has done very well, as you mentioned in your study. So uh, I want to congratulate everybody, and uh, I'm very moved. I think Greece, Eladites, Kielnes, Kipru, Boruma, Pame, Polybrosta, Safotoiko System, Master Antoliki, Mesoyo, Opo, Fistimi, then Iparhi, Epafidi, Totorino, the Xeriti. Excuse me for my Greek, am I allowed? And I will now go into English again. So all my wishes and I hope uh, in, a, in a few years for uh, Cyprus and the University of Cyprus to have the funding to proceed because there, this, this study is amazing, but of course and more things have to be done. Thank you. I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Anna Margarito, who's a special scientist in the Center for Entrepreneurship, who did all the work. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mrs. Pepelasi. It's an honor, Mr. Kokinos. Thank you, Mr. Markovulos, and everyone. So. Good evening, um, everyone, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, we are very excited to present this study to you. Uh, before I start, I would like to take a minute to thank everyone who has contributed uh, in one way or another uh, to this study. We appreciate the support. Also, keep in mind that the study is not exhaustive. It's just the first step. And as my friend uh, Petros Kola said, the road to success is under construction. So we plan to continue to build and maintain the effort. So our study tries to map the course of the, uh, the 
Cyprus entrepreneurial ecosystem to understand the factors that govern entrepreneurship in Cyprus in the last decade. Most importantly, we wish to provide the basic characteristics of the Cyprus startups. And of course, to promote the database as a tool for monitoring the ecosystem based on specific indicators. Next, we will examine the course of the ecosystem. But where are we now? When I interviewed Michael Tirimos from Capacitor Partners and I asked him, where are we now in the ecosystem development? He said, and I quote, if I had to define versions of the ecosystem, I would say we are towards the end of the second version. What that means is we had laid the foundation, we, the, the infrastructure, we created the national research and innovation governance system, we created policies and bodies overseeing the implementation of these policies. Uh, we had the first communities and ventures and we saw the first growth models. And we also saw our first very own uh, exit, and some of them very recently. So to recap, the Cyprus entrepreneurial ecosystem is an emerging one. Let's look at the details. Around 2010, we had the first formal agreement between the government and the European Investment Fund um, for the Jeremy Fund for financing SMEs, which was distributed through the Bank of Cyprus and Ancoria Bank. Um, around 2011, we saw the first steps in venture creation with startups such as Proto.io, Pofish, Hellas Direct. We also had the first communities such as the Cypriot Enterprise Link. Around the same period, Cyprus introduced the IP box, offering protection and further incentives for startups. In 2014, a new financing scheme, CYPEF, the Cyprus Entrepreneurship uh, Fund, was introduced with 140 million for financing uh, SMEs. From 2016 onwards, we saw more policies uh, being introduced, like the startup visa, the law on social entrepreneurship, more tax, uh, tax incentives for angel investors. We introduced uh, also, which were also introduced with the action plan for uh, growth. And this is very important because the action plan for growth identifies entrepreneurship as a major pillar driving economic uh, growth. A major milestone was reached with the establishment of the Deputy Ministry for Research, Innovation and Digital Policy and the Chief Scientist. Their role is to introduce, oversee and implement um, research and innovation strategies and policies to ensure effective stakeholder uh, collaboration. And this year, um, it's significant for the ecosystem because we had the announcement of the Cyprus uh, Equity Fund back in May. The National Equity Fund comes to close the finance gap, which has been one of the least developed parts of the entrepreneurial model as defined by Eisenberg. The new fund of funds is structured with resources from the recovery and resilient facility of Cyprus and reflows uh, of the Jeremy Fund with budget of 30 uh, million and the rest will be supplemented um, by private investments. In the initial phase, the fund will concentrate on developing startups at the pre-seed and seed stage. The intention is to bo boost the economic growth and hence the competitiveness of SMEs and to speed up the maturity of the ecosystem. Also, it aims to ensure the future readiness for venture capital investment. Currently, there are only few other VC funds operating in Cyprus. The KV Fund by Kinesis Venture uh, being the most prominent amongst them. Uh, Kinesis Venture is an acceleration company that provides a soft landing to promising Cypriot companies uh, with unique value proposition 
to scale in the USA market. And also another uh, platform was recently introduced called CrowdBase, who comes also to uh, bridge the financing uh, gap. Let's see now who influenced significantly entrepreneurial success. The state is a major player, and with the introduction of the national research and innovation governance system, it has accelerated greatly the growth of the ecosystem, and it enables further entrepreneurial activity. Uh, part of that is the establishment of institutions and bodies such as the deputy ministry, which are implementing further the, the framework uh, for research and innovation. Part of that framework is also carried out through the Research and Innovation Foundation with their programs designed to further support entrepreneurship at the early stage. And let's not forget that many startups today are thriving from, uh, with oxygen from the Research and Innovation Foundation programs. Uh, then we have academia, which uh, plays an integral, uh, integral role in the ecosystem, uh, not only with innovation coming from research, but also it has the res responsibility to address the shortage of graduate, especially in the same uh, STEM uh, disciplines. And finally, the startups and the founders themselves who drive the entrepreneurial success with their activity. The factors that promote entrepreneurship in Cyprus regards the new policies, like we mentioned, uh, for supporting entrepreneurship uh, and for attracting global talent with the startup visa, the digital nomad visa, the policy for third country nationals, the IP box, um, and we have uh, also the certificate for uh, innovative enterprises, which is uh, issued by the deputy ministry the law on social entrepreneurship, further incentives, tax incentives for investors, and uh, let's not forget uh, the grant schemes by the Research and Innovation Foundation. But however, uh, there are still persisting issues that hinder the development of startups. Funding remains as number one, and the small market size uh, for which startups uh, should adopt an outward looking approach uh, if they want to scale. Next, we have the bureaucratic processes when dealing with banks and state systems. The restrictive legislation for technology transfer from spin offs. Further misconception and cultural norms uh, which continue to affect the population as fear for failure uh, prevents many from embarking on the entrepreneurial journey. And the low uh, graduates uh, of, uh, of the low number of graduates uh, in STEM. And last, many consider that the intensity of uh, communication between stakeholder, stake stakeholders is weak and this results in less collaborations. Some of the factors that hinder entrepreneurship contribute to a certain extent to the reasons for startups being rejected from getting funded. Major reasons are the team formation, founders' background uh, and, and having complementary scheme, the team commitment, or simply there is no demand for the product, weak depreciation, or it can also be that the venture does not uh, fit the investment portfolio criteria. And last, the lack of novelty or the lack of innovation component. Before we move on uh, onto the characteristics of the startups, I think it is important that we provide the definition of what constitutes a startup to differentiate it from the traditional business. So Forbes describes startups as young companies bringing to market unique service or product that is irresistible uh, or irreplaceable to consumers. While traditional SMEs tried a road already tried by many startups, which usually are less than 10 years old, uh, are trying to create an entirely new template. And as startups strive for growth, this new template needs to be easily scalable. 
So now let's look at the characteristics of the startups. The majority of them, or 58%, are concentrated in the capital Nicosia. Coming next is Limassol with 25%, and then Paphos and Larnaca with 11 and 6%, respectively. The majority of them are registered, and only 4% of them are pre-startups. Uh, most of these pre-startups are research teams and they are not registered yet uh, due to uh, restrictions with um, the legislation regarding technology transfer from uh, spin-offs. The vast majority of companies are headquartered in Cyprus and they have an average age of three and a half years. Most of the startups in our survey consist of small teams with two to five employees with a predominantly male composition. Only 17% of that is female. Company size is indicative of the company performance and growth, while team composition shows the need for more gender diversity. And as Cyprus is taking actions towards a more sustainable economy, and as the ecosystem is maturing, we observe how the B2B model becomes predominant, deviating from the B2C uh, model that we had in recent years, uh, which is in the tourism and travel sector. And most of them are uh, using software as a service and price per item uh, revenue models, followed by a 17% being successful subscription-based, and we expect that number to rise as subscriptions uh, become, they gain in popularity. The prevailing sectors are FinTech with 15%, Life Sciences 9%, Entertainment Media 7%, 29% don't identify, uh, identify with any of the traditional uh, sectors, and this is kind of expected as most of them are either creating new markets or their solution deviate from uh, in more than one ways from the established sectors. The majority of them are leveraging technologies such as software, web and mobile application, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and um, cloud computing, to name few. The majority of startups, 51%, that are at the early stage are self-financing their ventures, which is uh, below the EU average. Possible reasons for that might be either lack of funds or lack for, of entrepreneurial experience, know-how, transparency, and communication, um, which can prevent them from getting funded by investors. Uh, startups with, experience, with um, founders experience or global experience or with strong R&D background have managed to secure better funding from angel investors. And 11% uh, reported uh, having uh, funds uh, from public funds through EU grants, um, the RIF programs, um, and others. And another 11% are backed by uh, VCs, but those VCs are mainly uh, foreign investors in countries such as UK, USA, and uh, Greece. The majority of them in the pre uh, in the early stage, have requested up to half a million in finding, uh, while surprisingly 28% need up to uh, 1 million. Possible explanations are startups might overestimate their needs, or they wish to maximize their funding. Those who are requesting over uh, one million are usually more mature star startups that intend to emphasize on their traction and looking to uh, scale. Revenue is key for growth and it's a metric for performance that can show how well a business is doing. In our study, we have uh, set a benchmark of of 150,000 euros, and this is an example taken from other ecosystems such as the Finnish one, which I greatly admire. To be able to monitor growth and performance, that number needs to double during the period of analysis, and based on other ecosystem, um, that period of analysis should be set for four, uh, up to four years, and uh, as we know, long-term data is much more comparable. The majority of uh, startups, um, nascent companies, 
plan to raise capital uh, in the next 12 months, either to achieve growth or to transform their business uh, in some way. Uh, 60% of the participants believe that uh, we have good infra infrastructure in place to support startups, the best aspects being information and communication technologies and favorable conditions for starting a business. On the other hand, 40% believe there is a huge room for, in, um, for improvement, especially when it comes to uh, funding, access to funding, and access and support in finding uh, qualified staff. As this is our first uh, report, uh, we included as many startups as possible in this section. We have highlighted the top five starting with uh, Hellas Direct with 67 million, having been through uh, several uh, rounds going up to Series C. Then we have Plan Fintech with 56 million, the last known is ser Series A. Um, Truva with 33 million, Learn Worlds with 30 million, we don't know the series. Uh, and Cofish with 16 million going up to Series B. Uh, this Information, we believe it's quite important uh, for the ecosystem in terms of uh, impact. Here we have the most significant, uh, significant exits and three of them have been uh, made only this year. Um, starting with Avocado offering mobile uh, native solutions um, has been sold to Glispa in 2006 for around 20 million. Foodie, which is a delivery platform and got acquired in 2019 by Delivery Hero uh, for undisclosed amount. However, uh, based on similar uh, investments uh, and exits and deals, uh, we believe that to be around 12 to 50 million, million but we are speculating. Uh, Pofish, uh, which is an innovative market research tool that got acquired by Prodigy for around uh, 70 to 80 million. NYPD Genetics, a biotech specializing in genetic uh, testing, and it got acquired uh, by Medicover for 44 million. And last, we have Truva, an e-commerce platform that got acquired by Matecom for around um, 15 to 20 million. The exits are defined by being on average six-year-old, medium size, have raised capital a couple of times, already achieved global success with offices in three countries, and have been backed by foreign investors. Now, Avocado and Foodie are one of the great success stories to date because we have information about life after the, the exit, after the deal. Uh, the buyout ensured the continuation of the, of the company, more in the case of Foodie, and the product. The seeming and smooth integration uh, added immediate value to the um, acquirer, and they have both demo demonstrated entrepreneurial mindset uh, and understood the importance of culture early on, something that allowed them to uh, achieve growth. Most importantly, there are testimony that we have great talent in Cyprus able to achieve global success. And as George Larco from Impact Tech said to me, there are diamonds in Cyprus. But as we evolve, there is always a room for improvement and we need to also address the issues and provide some recommendations. We need to encourage female founders and promote inclusive entrepreneurship that will provide a path for social stability, equality, and it will give us better uh, wealth building opportunities. We need to intensify the stakeholder coordination in order to provide a common vision with which we can all do our part while acting together and uh, have more co-production. We need to revise the legislation for, for university uh, spin-offs and maybe suggest trying things on a case-by-case -case basis before adopting um, any new policies. More than ever, we need a tool for monitoring the course of the ecosystem and keep track of the KPIs. 
And on that note, I introduce to you our database registry for startups. Startup Hub Cyprus aims to provide information and transparency in order to help startups grow. Uh, you can scan the code that you may find outside or if you already have it, um, just go follow the link, scan. Uh, I will just exit this and maybe I can demonstrate to you. So this is the, it's, keep in mind this is pilot, it's not final, we are building upon it. <laughs> so there may be some elements that need more fixing. Uh, you can download our report uh, from our site. You can also view the database. These are the startups who have participated. And if you click, you, it will redirect you to the uh, page of that startup. You can uh, find out about uh, what they do, uh, more information. Uh, of course, in our database, we have more than the displayed information for different reasons. We don't put everything there. And we hope that soon we will also be able to build some uh, analytics so you can get a, be a better picture. Also, we have included our map and if you zoom, you can check all the parts of the entrepreneurial model. Um, and of course, we will be very happy uh, to forge new collaborations and new partnerships with uh, whoever is interested to work with us. Um, so thank you. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope this was interesting. And um, we are planning to continue the efforts and improve. Thank you very much. keep this open-ended. We celebrate the entire ecosystem today and um, each one of you is coming from a different region of the map. So I, I, first I just want to hear your thoughts and comments. And let's take turns. Whoever wants to start. Yes? Uh, this is a very useful and congratulations. It's the first time that I see this kind of map. I mean, you've managed to put knowledge that we have in a structural way that we can visually and in a very tangible way uh, rethink our policies, our systems, and uh, the way we approach the version 3 version now, not just the version 2.1. Uh, since you made reference to a version 2 ecosystem. A few comments, but also I want to say that around 10 minutes after 10 or late 10.15, I have to leave because I have to be at the dinner that I'm hosting in for some uh, uh, visitors from abroad uh, in Limassol, so I have to be fast. Um, I will just go through the list of uh, things that I noted down as uh, the presentation was ongoing. It doesn't mean that this uh, uh, in a high, it, there is no hierarchy. What I, what I keep, for me, number one uh, challenge is funding, and number two is culture. The others are more manageable. Funding, it's a pan-European challenge because the ecosystems in, in Europe, especially South European countries, and venture capital and funding is the most difficult part of the job. And that's why we see a brain drain towards US because ecosystems in, in Europe, and we have excellent research and initial stages of startups that they struggle, and then all this investment, all this human capital, this which is financial capital as well, and time of people, all this wealth of knowledge is being drifted away from Europe and Cyprus. 
So the funding uh, issue is, is, a, is a top priority and probably one of the most uh, visible inhibitors. And culture, and when I say culture, it, it has to do not just with the current ecosystem, it's not just the higher education challenge, it's the culture that starts from the school age. We are being trained, we are being brought up by our, our parents, the society and, and the education system uh, to be risk free, risk averse. We don't take risks. We don't teach entrepreneurial, we don't encourage entrepreneurship. So it's very difficult for a student after three, four, five years of investing all this money and time to take the risk and they prefer to take the safe way because their mindset is not trained, it's not, uh, the appetite is not there. So funding and culture. Uh, also, uh, the stakeholder collaboration. It's a very small ecosystem. Rightly, it has been pointed out that we should be more rest of it and collaborate with ecosystems abroad. What I notice, being a chief scientist as well as a minister, is that there is not even collaboration among the local ecosystem. We don't even dare to think to share our infrastructure, our electron microscope, our, and this is investment paid by the government of the European Union, and we consider even infrastructure, not just brain, infrastructure that exists in this university, or oh, this is my laboratory, I will not share it with TEBAC because then they will submit a proposal that is more competitive. The infrastructure, it's a national wealth. It does not belong to the researcher, it does not belong to the start it belongs to the country. It's money from the citizens, from the taxpayers. So this is very important to understand that stakeholder collaboration is key. Gender balance and uh, female founders, it's a huge challenge. No more comment on that. And um, we do not even, even the start they do not get into the, they don't get the opportunity or we don't prompt them to take a helicopter view of the ecosystem and see what other startups are doing. Oh, this is my startup company, and this is what I'm doing, but they do not interact. For example, I didn't see startup companies promoting the startup visa program of the government. They invite startups from other countries to come and collaborate with them and work together in a, in, 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 in a, in, in a common space. Um, and the last two things that I want to provide uh, for kickstarting this conversation is that this very brilliant uh, ecosystem mapping, it's like a repository, it's, it's like a database, and it's just a national. Uh, we should see how we interlock and do we include the diaspora as other uh, sister or brother ecosystems uh, into this map and make this more complex and more fancy. And uh, also we should make this uh, web link that you show. And I'm willing to consider some funding for it, okay? Uh, through my policy program, not, not to just be a rear view mirror at the repository, but a one-stop shop for every information on startup, for startup, and information for startup visa, digital nomad, uh, what kind of equipment exists uh, anywhere in Cyprus that can be reused for, for my, uh, you know, a 3D printer. Uh, if I don't have a 3D printer that can print this quality or this type of material, Probably this exists in Tebak, it exists in another university, and call them up. So think bigger than what you think you should, stretch your imagination and outthink further, and dare to challenge us as policy makers. And uh, last but not least, think about the diaspora. Our biggest propulsive fuel is outside Cyprus. These are the people that are, they, they don't have to be start they can be companies, they can be Cypriots or Greeks that are, uh, you know, 
uh, having, they're having a career abroad and uh, we can leverage them. Uh, I think that that is my introduction. Thank you. Okay. And congratulations. Shall I? Yes. Um, hi. I was supposed to start a bit differently. As our, in JA, our main uh, um, endeavors concentrate on uh, education. However, I would like to state a few things on the report and on what the minister has said, and then I will uh, raise my uh, opinion and our perspective in terms of what is going on in the educational system of Cyprus. So, uh, this year it was the first attempt of JA to create a pre-accelerator scheme and to um, try to give life to startups that we create. As so far, we only stayed uh, in, uh, uh, in the level of the idea and just creating the team. So uh, the main concerns that we had from the beginning, it was how, uh, what would happen after the pre-accelerator. So, uh, th this was the reason that we uh, approached the different incubators and accelerators and other research centers to help us uh, accelerate, uh, to help our teams accelerate. So it was a huge difficulty for us. I think this is a very limited, uh, we are in a very limited level still in terms of uh, accelerators and, and incubators. Even in research, it's very limited. So we need more uh, to make sure that we help our uh, student teams enough so they are able to go to the next level. So that's one thing. Uh, we also miss uh, a number of investors and business angels. This is another issue. It's something that I regularly discuss with our partners. And when I say partners, I would like to, I have actually something which I disagree uh, within the report, one of the results, and this is the collaboration. Uh, JA exists and is alive because of the collaboration. We couldn't do anything alone. We have the business and we have the government and we have many of you in the audience that you participate and you support pro bono what we do and you don't support JA, you support uh, the educational system, you support the youth of Cyprus uh, to make sure that in the future we will have better results than those we have seen today. So in terms of collaboration, I think that this is something that is changing uh, to the better, to the best, and I'm sure in the future it will be much, uh, much better. However, uh, I think my role here today is to emphasize on the educational aspect which is something that we didn't see in this report. However, it is something that we have seen in previous reports of the center, and it is something that we are very, I'm worried, and uh, I feel quite weird when I need to state our perspective uh, for the education and the future of education, the formal education of Cyprus. So, for us in JA, uh, and uh, for the most of the educational programs around the world, the definition of entrepreneurship it is not the same as what research centers and the government and the business adopt. For us, entrepreneurship is about uh, helping uh, our young people to turn their ideas into action. Maybe this is not something that will uh, result to a real startup, but it is something that is valuable in any aspect of life and uh, the society and the economy, of course. So uh, this is something I would like to, uh, to state uh, and to uh, emphasize. Also, if we want something to change, which it has, but as I said, there is more space for improvement, we need to start early. Uh, the, um, also, the report emphasizes what happens from the university level and up. If we want to see things changing in Cyprus, we need to start from the primary level, even from the pre-primary level sometimes. Um, we have seen what happened during the pandemic, what happens now with the war and the whole financial crisis again and everything. So 
the formal education as we see it in Cyprus, which it has not changed the last 20 years, I don't know if you have different perspective, but I was a teacher for 17 years and nothing has had changed since the day when I started working. And I, I don't have any news for you uh, even today. So if we want to change and if we want to confront all, the, all these challenges, we need to make sure that formal edu edu education uh, is, uh, um, is enhanced with skills development, with uh, more ethics and the ethical part of turning our ideas into action. Um, and also uh, we need to set as a country a specific strategy Mr. Kokinos, this is for you. <laughs> I think you should be the driving force behind this because we are one out of the eight countries in the EU that we don't have a specific strategy on entrepreneurship education. It is only circulars from the ministry. So we should conceptualize our entrepreneurship education strategy. We should see uh, all together how it will be implemented in the formal curriculum. And I should uh, also say that uh, uh, the, the countries that are, are highly ranked in the uh, World Economic Forum Competitiveness Index are the countries who have adopted a specific strategy in the, in the formal education uh, compulsor, uh, as a compulsory uh, uh, lesson. So you talked about the culture, which I agree, I couldn't agree more and it starts in the pre-primary school, again I would say. We should enhance, enhance and develop teachers' training uh, schemes. It is very important because we want teachers to teach something that they don't know. So if we want them to, to be able to teach entrepreneurship, imagine that teachers are the less risky people. That is the reason they have, cho they have chosen this career. So if we want them to teach, people to take risks, they should first understand what they need to teach. So, and the last one, uh, it's again about funding, which is also the case for the startups, but it, it's also the case for education. Uh, we need to subsidize not only JA, but any organization who implements programs in schools. Uh, as an idea, I leave what happens in Scandinavia and in Netherlands. Uh, the more uh, so the government uh, adds the same amount that a, a, an organization has as a private funding. So if we have like one million from private funding, the government subsidizes with another million. And my finishing, I talked a lot. Huh? <laughs> so the, my finishing line, um, it would be that uh, if we want to change things, we should further enhance the collaboration with, between the ministries in terms of educational entrepreneurship education. Uh, because in, in Cyprus, where I think we do a great work in terms of this, we only reach 5% of the whole student population. So all this work, with the support of all of you in here, only reach 5% of the population. Thank you. Okay, so we're making your life very easy. You ask one startup question, we're gonna say whatever we want, and we're gonna be wrapping it up. The minister will leave in uh, five minutes, so I'll... I'll five, five, seven minutes, because I have to be in So I'll, I'll, I'll try to... Okay, just grab the microphone in three minutes so you can complete the, what you want to say. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so a, a lot has to be said already. Uh, so what I would like to sort of focus on is more uh, providing context. Uh, I'm very proud, as PWC, that we actually funded and supported this study. Uh, and and um, I think any, any self-respecting ecosystem needs to really know itself first and to call itself an ecosystem needs to consider its strengths, where it stands, the evolution. 
I agree with the finding that uh, it is an emerging hub, it's an emerging ecosystem, it's, a, it's maturing, uh, a lot of progress indeed has been made over the last 10 years, but I think what we're really identifying is that we need to decide the level of aspiration and the ambition and the, and the why we need to really push it to the next levels of evolution. Um, in PwC, we believe very much in the principles of uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, agility, speed, uh, characteristics that are very much part of this uh, uh, concept and, uh, and culture of uh, uh, a startup community. Very rightly, it was pointed out that funding and culture were attributes the minister picked up. I also picked up the bureaucracy issue as well, because we can <laughs> address that as well. But um, I, I, th I think there are good stories and good examples where we actually make stakeholder cooperation work. Um, I, I mean, private sector, government, uh, we have a number of examples in the recent only days or weeks where together in uh, the US we were promoting Cyprus as a tech uh, center, um, very much uh, appealing to the, the diaspora that you were mentioning. Uh, yesterday we were joining forces uh, to promote uh, cross-governmental support with the private sector. So I think the fact that we're a small economy and a small community uh, makes it very possible that we run faster. The point about the Greek example that we are as a culture much more open, internationalized, is something we, f we forget. And we don't believe in ourselves enough to make the little changes that are necessary in a small economy to really connect it more and, and accelerate. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of really joining stakeholder groups. We've been, we've been a strategic partner to Junior Achievement, and we're supporting Chris and Leave, we're supporting scale-up programs. So, and, 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 and there is so much that we can do in a connected way, for, for sure. Um, so my, my, my fundamental message is that Having uh, Sofroni the vision for Cyprus uh, 2035 and, and a long-term economic growth model, where we, the aspiration is that Cyprus is a, you know, one of the best places in the world to live, one of the best places in the world to do business, uh, to to work from, uh, means that as part of that bigger vision, we need a startup community that instills that cultural attributes from the education system and becomes an aspiration for young people to see upside potential with exits or with a, an internationalization mindset. Um, a lot of things need to change in the, in the more structural parts, education, but we see the government having the, the right uh, mindset and attitude. I'm one of those people who believe that we should look at the glass half full versus half empty and look at the progress, but I'm also one of those people that believe that we should not accept progress as progress. We should have very ambitious plans and really accelerate because we really need to move uh, uh, beyond. I'll stop here to give Kiriakos a chance to complete his thoughts yeah. and maybe continue. All right. Um, first of all, about the collaboration. You know, the people in this room, especially you, are the agent of change. And yes, you are collaborating and uh, your effort is highly appreciated by the community as well as CIDEA and, uh, and PWC efforts, but every single person in this room are agents of change and we advocate startups. But our voice, the reach out, is limited, it's not at scale because it's not embraced, it's not embedded into the fabric and the operating system of our education system. The program of JE is a brilliant program. If you ask out of the how many um, Lyceum students do we have, if they ever heard about it, I mean, not just hear the word, but they, they went through, they spent 10 minutes process to think, should I get into this program, should I apply, should I? I'm sure the number will be disappointing because this is not communicated, it's not propagated, it's not promoted in a structured way as a mandatory part of the education system. The, the most transformational effort here could probably be, and let's you know have another meeting at the later <coughs> stage, gamification of entrepreneurship as a mandatory course at the age of 12 to 15, and another edition age 15 to 18. 
gamification of entrepreneurship. We let them play a game of entrepreneurship, well structured, as a mandatory course at the gym, uh, gymnasium or gymnasium, gymnasium and, 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 and um, We see brilliant examples of agents of change and the cost for being the first mover as we say in Greek, the cost of the scapane and ascapsis, the road, is huge. But we need to be decisive and there to bring this at scale. And, and so far, prior to the ministry uh, establishment, uh, this was a bottom up approach. Now, with the ministry and the chief scientist and the reconfiguration, of uh, Research and Innovation Foundation from Idrim Ambrothis Servnas, which was just research, uh, things are changing. We just have to keep going and keep moving faster. And also we want your help. Challenge us. Challenge our policies. Challenge our funding uh, uh, instruments, our way of thinking. I see in this room brilliant minds, people that I know, Michalic is Spanish there, who is, uh, is like a solo advocate of uh, our uh, startup ecosystem. As Filippo said, we should see the, the glass full half, not, full, uh, not uh, half empty. And we can do it. I, I am very optimistic if we probably coordinate our efforts and again, Thank you for this uh, study, and let's take it to the next version, where it will be the, the starting point for not just for mapping what exists today, but a target state, and the transitioning, and the steps to go to the target state. Um, unfortunately, the chief scientist and the director of uh, Research Innovation Foundation could not be here today, but please, I will ask them to meet with you. If I have the time, I would be with, uh, with uh, them when they come back, they are abroad. Uh, and uh, you need to share this with them, and uh, we can brainstorm together how we leverage on this. This should not be just left as a publication. This should be step one of a long journey. Thank you very much. Apologies that I have to leave. And uh, I'm sure that with our two distinguished panelists and the chairmanship of Wanos, uh, good things no, will I'm come out. It short because we're keeping uh, people away from food and we're not running late. Thank you so much. <laughs>
I want to thank you for uh, <laughs> for providing the funding for this. It was uh, the funding for this research was a very short phone call to Costadina. Uh, startup ecosystem map. Yes. So, yes, we need this. Go. <laughs> like a two-minute phone call. So thank you for making it easy for us. Uh, are, are there uh, are, uh, other parts of the ecosystem that you feel uh, you you should be closer with, but for reasons uh, that uh, uh, for, for some reason it's not really happening. But you could be doing more, they could be doing more, we could be doing more, connecting you, that's not really hindering your efforts to support entrepreneurs in Cyprus in some way. And how can we help? Okay, Con conscious that, and I know you want to break it for, <laughs> for, the, for the coffee break. Uh, okay, um, I, I believe, I, I, I really believe that we have all the ingredients to really push this to the next level. There is a pivotal point when any ecosystem, especially a startup ecosystem, becomes self-funding and self-reliant. If you ask uh, the startup community in Israel today, they will tell you, you know, what's, what's happening? They'll say, we don't do anything. It happens by itself because all the players are already there, the culture is already there, and everybody just has enough incentive to go there because it's all happening. So we need to find a pivotal point where everything is happening and the, the players are all, are all in place. It, there, there are elements of the puzzle that are missing that were pointed out in the study, primarily on the funding side, but already improvements uh, are made. Um, we need to believe more on, on our strengths um, that come from the agility of the economy and the stakeholders to come together. So fundamentally solutions are easy and what we need is a mindset of taking that extra step to connect it. So your question is how, how can you connect more? Um, we do a part in role modeling that a private sector is not only focused on its own profits or its own promotion, and, and we have so, so, so many different activities to demonstrate that. And I think the more private sector can demonstrate that, the more others come within an ESG mindset to, to, to come together. The more we support initi great initiatives like the Junior Achievement, the more it becomes a competition of, of, of sort of supporting each other. And I've been to so many events and you see the amazing culture that's been created and the excitement, which in itself becomes a self-fueling, propelling uh, energy for others to, to, to contribute. You see members of government that, that, that increasingly see themselves as a platform for change, as a platform for enabling other stakeholders to come in. We have academia, they're still playing solo sometimes, but increasingly you see centers being opened and, and inviting others to, to play in and, and, and connect. So I, I, I like this idea that we should stop competing internally within Cyprus, that we should compete outside of Cyprus, that we join forces and we play Cyprus. Um, sometimes we're a small island and we see each other and we try to be the better sort of uh, boy or girl within our own neighborhood. Whereas, you know, just joining those forces and play outside um, actually have greater strengths that, that we realize and we imagine. And I see it increasingly more and more with my new role, talking to people outside Cyprus. Uh, so I, I think we should stop asking how can we collaborate and I really ask the question of how can we really take it to the next level of bringing outcomes out of that collaboration uh, and just uh, consider it a must that we think joining forces and co-creation than anything else. Well, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today and for helping us understand the value of, of, of what we did and suggesting ways uh, to move uh, forward. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, this event was, uh, was, was great. It was, uh, it was exciting, but nowhere near as exciting as the events that you are achieving. If you've never been to, to, to an event, I, uh, it's going to change. It's going to make you a lot more optimistic about the future of this island. That's, that was my feeling from the latest. Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, let's uh, you know, let's let's mingle, let's discuss, uh, let's uh, take it. Uh...